I took a visit to go see Contavian Morgan to let him know that Long Beach is gonna offer him a scholarship. And I was surprised. The conditions that he grew up in, just crazy. And he was able to make it out. Look, I'm hoping that this scholarship changes his life because he didn't grow up with much at all. I mean, his house was kind of broken down. When I walked in, everything was broken, missing, not much, just a mattress in the middle of the floor. And I'm proud of this kid and what he's been able to accomplish up to this point. I'm hoping that this college scholarship changes he and his family's life. And I'm ready for him to put the ball on the court here at Long Beach State. Let's get to work. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And welcome to the off season coming off of maybe a miracle season as we made the NCAA tournament and won an actual play in game. And also, we won our conference championship as well. I mean, that is a great season if you ask me. But now let's talk season two as we hop into the off season. Florida actually did defeat Ohio State in the national championship. And now let's get down to business. So the first task in the off season is to look at our verbal agreements. We have two, one with Justin Simpson, who will be renamed to Contavian Morgan. And I think I'm going to commit to him. Now we have two scholarships. And the reason why I do want to commit to him right now is because he can shoot. I mean, he has pro type three point range and I need that, especially since Wendell Caesar is moving on. I'm definitely going to need that score and I'm going to sign him. Now, Anthony Cotton is interesting, but we do have offseason recruiting as well. So we have one scholarship left. Do I want to use it on a guy that I know nothing about? I'm not. I just can't commit to this. So I am going to move on from Anthony Cotton. The only guy we will sign is going to be Simpson, who is going to be Morgan. Now, we do have two players leaving, Cuba London and Wendell Caesar. They will be graduating, both seniors. And I'm going to miss the hell out of Wendell Caesar, to be honest, man. He was such a good shooter, such a good scorer. And I hear that he has a sibling coming up. So he is two years younger. We'll have to watch out for him. Now, we finished the season 20 and 14. That means we have a lot of work to do in the offseason with recruiting. But first, before getting into that, we got a surprise invitation from the West Coast Conference. They want us to replace San Francisco in their conference for the upcoming season. So I go back and look at their conference and I just look at it. You know, this is an upgrade, a huge one. It's an eight team conference. Gonzaga finished 22 and 11 in their conference, 14 and 0 in conference. Pepperdine also made uh, a postseason tournament, not the NCAA tournament, but the NIT. But we'll be, pay be replacing San Francisco, who went 17 and 14. I would think we were replaced the last place team, but maybe San Francisco has been bad for so long and they finally had a good season. But I think maybe there was the last straw and they get replaced. So we will commit to joining the West Coast Conference. When I get these invitations, I do want to take them, but I do want to commit to each conference at least two years going forward. So in the West Coast Conference, we will be in this conference for at least two years. But just looking at the outcome here, Gonzaga made the NCAA tournament, but they ended up losing in the second round. And then Pepperdine lost in the first round in the NIT. So this is actually a better conference, better competition, better players. So let's move into the off-season recruiting. Now, if you're new to this game, how it works is that you have in-season recruiting. You can offer scholarships and they will commit, just like you saw the verbal commits from our first two recruits. But then it also carries over into the off-season. So now we have some more recruits who are interested in us. Now, since we moved on to the con to the next conference, I decided to go after just two stars here. So two stars will be the recruiting rating here in season two that we can go after the max. And I'm looking at a couple of guys. How about Keith Yura? He is a good shooter, two star. He is 448th nationally ranked and really good. I mean, he is a guy that I would want to be coming off the bench probably in scoring. And I think we just need that. That is one of our bigger needs right now, bench scoring. Now, Derek Brandon is the next recruit we are looking at here on our target list. He is a center. Now, I don't know if I need center right now, but it's always good to have good backups that you go after that can eventually be groomed. Because remember, we do have some seniors going into next year, like Takahashi. I'm going to call him Takahashi now, not Takashi. And I do want to just recruit some eventual big men. I don't know if this is the offseason to do it, 
but we will add him to the list. Next is Russ McGill out of Commerce City, Colorado. Now, one thing I like about him is that three point. You see, he shot 42% in high school there, 8.2 points per game, 3.2 rebounds. And looking at his details, he was an all-state track star. Very, very interesting. I think that means he can run the floor and he can run in transition. I really, really like that ability. He also has a decent ability to rebound the ball, but it says he always will have his eyes on the pros. Now, I don't know if a two-star prospect is going to end up committing to the pros, so I'm just going to ignore those notes when it comes to these two-star, even three-star prospects. When it gets to four and five-star, maybe we'll have to start considering that, but for these guys, I don't think we'll have to worry. Now, the next guy on our list, on our target list, it's an eight-person list, an eight-recruit list, Seth Barrett, another guy that's a shooting guard, and I like him, but I don't see any notes for shooting, and that's really what I'm looking for. He's an athletic guy, it says, and he's an average rebounder, but I want a guy that's going to be more of a shooter as a guard or a forward. Now, the next guy is Demetrius Boswell, and just looking at him, He'll have no problem stepping in and understanding the system. That actually intrigues me a little bit, knowing he's a smart player. Maybe he'll be an all-around guy. He was also all-state, I believe, in his respective state. Next is Sean Dalton, another center. You know, we don't really need one, so I'm kind of just going to leave him alone. But the final guy is Kim Kimisi, Kimisi? Is it Kimisi? Childress. Now, he is interesting. You know, he has some size to him six foot four 200 i think that's a good size guard i don't think he's much of a small forward that, like they have them listed as but i think that he's good i think he's a good third option just in case we don't get one of the other top guys on our board right here like hira or mcgill so i'm going to keep childress around because boswell i don't think is much of a shooter now we advance a little bit and see some progress after uh you know, recruiting them a little bit. You see the recruiting points are going down. That's because we're commu committing to scouting more with these guys. And I do want to figure out, you know, who's the best fit for us. Right now, I'm looking at Hira and McGill, though. McGill also with that 42% from three, that's very, very intriguing. That tells me that he's going to be a pretty good scorer. And I'm going to keep him. Him and Hira are both going to be one and two right now. And you can see we want to schedule a head coach visit and see what we got. Now, Childers, I'm still keeping it around just in case, and he is our third option. We are first on his list, too. So, honestly, all three of our these guys that we're going after here, we narrowed it down to three now. I think that all three of these guys would be a good fit. It's just a matter of, hey, can they score coming off of the bench if we do end up having them come off the bench? But that's my plan right now. Now, Keith Yura, it looks like when we move on to the final two weeks, Samford has passed us. So that's interesting. You know, he has good size. I really like this guy. Six foot five. He's got the length. He can also probably shoot the ball pretty well. But now I might have to switch gears to Russ McGill. He's a smaller guy, six foot two. But the fact that he can run the floor is definitely intriguing to me. And I think that I'm going to go all in on him and offer him this final scholarship and really do my due diligence in researching him so i make sure i scout him fully and i get it down to nine points and mcgill still hasn't committed yet so we offered him this scholarship it does take a week to get the results but he hasn't committed so i go down to chemistry is it i don't know how to say his name chemistry childress and i decide to offer him a scholarship as well just in case we don't get mcgill so we advance past the last scouting here, and we end up signing Russ McGill. He will get the final scholarship. He signs along with Simpson, who will be Contavian Mer Morgan. And now Russ McG McGill, I can't even say everybody's name, will be renamed to one of you guys. And we will cover that later in this episode. Now, one thing I love about this game is scheduling because you can't just schedule anybody you want. They have to want to play you and they have to accept an invitation to play you. So as you can see, we tried to schedule some really tough teams, but they didn't accept it because we're just not good enough. I like that. I like having to earn playing these good teams. So we do end up scheduling some decent teams. I put Wisconsin on there, Marquette. They ex accepted an offer to play them. Miami did as well, Ole Miss. 
And then we play Montana State as well, who we played in the playing game. And we open the season versus San Francisco, who we replaced. I want to see how good they are. We replaced them. I want to see if they want some revenge on us. And then Howard, shout out to Uncle Sam's Reject for his NCAA 10 series. Then we hop into conference play where we have an 18 conference now. So I'm, I'm guessing that every team makes the postseason tournament. And it's going to be fun to see that and see how we compete here in this new conference. We will go over each team. So the next stage here in the off season is training. So I decide to focus on shooting for our backcourt mostly in conditioning because I really want them to be really good shooters and I want to score because they're gonna need to. And then our front court, we're gonna focus more on defense and conditioning more than offense. I think that that's a smart move to do because honestly, at this point, you know, I do want some big men who can do the dirty work, eat up some fouls. I am changing the sliders a little bit here and I am going to be more focused on Getting it more realistic with uh, fatigue and everything and rotations and just fouls all together. I didn't see too many fouls in season one. I didn't want to change the sliders halfway through the season. So I decided to play one year with them. I did switch it up and did some practice games and found some ones that work for us. So let's look at the final roster here going into season number two. How about Baz Hellcott going into his junior season? He's the big man in the middle. Great rebounder. Great on defense. His spot isn't going anywhere. He's going to be very good for us in the middle of our offense and defense. Now, surprisingly here. Now, Delmatrice Bamaye really surprised me down the stretch. He's going to be a senior this year. But I'm going to give him the start, at least to start the season. I, I think he just showed an effort level on the both defensive and offensive ends that really intrigued me. You know, I, I like him a lot. I still do like Takahashi, but I didn't see enough from him on offense to really warrant him being in the starting lineup once again. So I decided to switch it up. Now, Joseph Spratley, as a true freshman, came off of the bench. But this year, I'm going to put him in the starting lineup. He is actually a very good playmaker. He can handle the ball well. 81 passing. So there's going to be times, I figured it out late in the year, that playing Zion Storm off ball actually benefits quite a bit because I can run him off screens, get him open threes. And when I do that, I can actually put Spratly at the one and put Joyner at the three and Z Zion Storm at the two and have our two shooters running off screens. I like that offense. And when I need three-point buckets, I'm going to need to do that. So J.D. Joyner, after training, had a pretty good offseason. He is second on the team in three-pointers, I believe. Or maybe he's first. I'm not sure. But, you know, one thing I like about all of these guys is that they play pretty good defense as a unit right here. I think this is actually a pretty good unit. And you can just see here, Zion Storm comes in, highest-rated guy on the roster at 67 overall. And I think... All five of our starters complement each other pretty well. We have our two shooters. And then we have, you know, Delmatrice Bamaye with 61-3. It may not look pretty, but it could go in once in a while. And we've seen that towards the end of last year. Spratly can hit an open three as well. I just really like this starting five right here. It is subject to change, but we will have to see how they work to start the year. Now, Contavian Morgan, who replaced Simpson, he's going to be our first scorer off the bench. Now, the issue with Morgan is that he cannot handle the ball well right now, but he has a good offensive skill set. He's not going to be a guy that's going to be that point guard that we're really looking for to spell Zion Storm, but I like his skill set. He can shoot the ball pretty well. He was our first recruit we went after, and I like what I see. But, you know, one guy that we have coming off the bench now is Dalton Jett. And he will replace McGill, and he is one of our subscriber members. So he gets to replace McGill. He is a good three-point shooter, 74 three-pointer, pretty good. And remember, he has that all-state speed, they said on the report, 81 speed. That's actually pretty good. On-ball defense is 83. Offensive ability is 76. I like this a lot. He's going to be the point guard that we've finally been waiting for to give Zion Storm a rest because, you know, a lot of last year, Zion Storm had to play the entire game. Like, we, we gave him no break. He had to play with the bench and the starters just because, you know, we didn't have a scorer off the bench and a guy to really set guys up, and I think that Jet could be that guy. 
Now, Takahashi moves to the bench, but he's still going to get some playing time. He's at 61 overall after training. And then CS Bands is going to get some playing time as well, especially since he's pretty good defensively. I like what he still can do there. And you're going to see him in the rotation quite a bit. He's going to get a couple of games where he starts as well. And it's going to be interesting seeing how we do work in, in this rotation with two new freshmen coming in. Buster Howard is going to be that 10th guy off the bench if we need some post scoring. I think that he's going to be in the lineup for sure. I think that he can add more of a post presence to our team. He is a senior going into this year, and so is Trevor Williams, who's more of a defensive guy and a rebounder. He's going to be in when we, they have like a dominant big man. He could get the start, you know, having the twin towers of Trevor Williams and Bass Hel Helcott. I used that a couple of times in some games last year, and it really did work out. So I am looking forward to doing that again. So our last four guys on the bench are all walk-ons and they are all uh, subscriber recruits. Like I'm gonna get to the rest of the conference as well with them. But the first is IT Thomas. You know, these guys aren't rated very well. They're just very intriguing, you know. Maybe they're guys that can sit and watch behind and learn in the program behind some seniors and some older guys. But, you know, I don't know how much playing time I can get with them. They're just decent. They're not great. They're not terrible, terrible. IT Thomas is definitely the best, though. He's 73 offensive rating, 74 defensive rating. So he's decent, but I wouldn't say that he's a guy that's going to be in a lot in these rotations. He might play sporadically, but he's a guy that could eventually get some playing time. Sigmund Connor is a senior point guard. Remember, these are all walk-ons, so I don't get to decide what year they are in school. They just come on at a random year. So we had a senior and a junior so far. And then Deshaun Ward is a freshman center, six foot eight. Maybe he's that future at big man inside. And I'm just looking at his ratings here. You know, he's not too bad. I definitely think he needs to work on some stuff, but I guess we'll have to see. I don't know what his future is going to be, but he's just a freshman. So he's got some years to develop. And then last is Spyro Conklin. He is a senior, but honestly, if I had to choose one guy that probably isn't going to play at all this year, it's going to be Spyro Conklin. Now, I did decide to go ahead and add all of you guys into this series. And how I did that, I said I was going to add you guys onto the teams in the conference I am in. So I am committing to this conference for two years. And depending on how those two years go, I could eventually get a promotion. Who knows? But I don't control that. The game actually controls that. So it's going to be interesting playing you guys and seeing all you guys in here. Now, I tried to fill up every team with uh, recruits from you guys submitted. And I haven't done all the teams. You can see here Pope is empty right there. Richard Pope. I will get him renamed. But a lot of these teams, I created over 100 guys, I believe. And a lot of these teams have pretty much all you guys. So if you see yourself, let me know down in the comments section below. And if you don't, um, maybe tag me. I might get you in there as well. This took a ton of time to do. So just uh, be courteous of that. But I do want to get you guys involved in this series in a big way. And it's going to be interesting seeing I created way more guys in this conference than I did in our last conference so i'm excited to see how some of these guys develop because i did go one by one and rename some of the best players and some of their bench players as well so i will try to get as many guys as i can in this series but it does take a lot of time to do but i do want to show you guys each roster and see who's in the game and if you see the y after the last name that is one of the subscriber recruits and also you know if you see that your last name is spelled wrong. That means that um, it didn't allow the max amount of characters for your last name. So uh, example, D. Roberto didn't fit in the whole last name. So I did have to uh, cut out like a letter or two and then add the Y at the end. It just didn't allow it. It's just the game, how it goes. But I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see you guys in the game itself and see you guys actually, you know, being a part of these teams. And I think this is exciting since we have eight teams in each conference. It's going to be interesting playing all of the, these teams 
twice and having kind of a smaller conference i think it's going to make it more personal because you know in the last conference we had a lot of teams to cover i could hardly even keep track i'm, I'm not an expert at these schools i don't know a lot about these schools but now there's only eight so i think that i can keep up a little bit better now so i'm going to enjoy these next two years here in uh, the west coast conference it's going to be interesting and honestly i'm just looking forward to developing this long beach state team and how will we respond replacing Wendell Caesar, who was our leading scorer a season ago, and versus some new competition? And these teams are all rated better than every team in the WAC last year. So going to be very, very interesting to see how we develop in Season 2. So that is going to do it here for this episode. I'm looking forward to Season 2 coming up soon. So stay tuned for that episode. We open up against San Francisco, who we replaced in this conference. And then Howard, Uncle Sam's rejects Howard. So this is going to be interesting. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Season 2 coming up next. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah, ain't filling out these job applications. Life got hard after high school graduation. I went to college and your boy got financial aid. They gave me money, then I went and bought a pair of J's. And I bought a pair of shades. And I bought a new computer. Half a hundred dollars left. Spent the rest.